Hello, I'm Luis from the Houston Public Library, and I'm here to talk to you about video games. Today, we're going to talk about another video game console that couldn't quite live up to its own hype. Specifically, we're going to talk about the Sega Dreamcast, the last console Sega developed before bowing out of the 1990s console wars altogether. Now, I'm not calling the Dreamcast a bad console. I actually owned one when it first came out, and I had a lot of fun with it. There were a lot of games on it that are still considered great games to this day. Games like Sonic Adventure 2, Crazy Taxi, Jet Set Radio, and even Skies of Arcadia, just to name a few. Lewis, no one played Skies of Arcadia! I know what I said! The console even came with some features that other consoles just weren't even attempting at the time. Things like a built-in modem for online games, which allowed for the creation of games like Fantasy Star Online and Bomberman Online. Granted, like I mentioned before, the Xbox made it better, but the Dreamcast tried it first. The console also came with a visual memory unit, or VMU for short, that could be attached directly to the controller. The VMU was pretty much a memory card, but it was designed with an LCD screen, a D-pad, and two buttons on it. It could be used to save game files, but its more interesting feature was how it could play mini-games away from the Dreamcast. Depending on what save files were stored on it, it could unlock access to all sorts of minigames. For example, a Skies of Arcadia save file would unlock a minigame called Pinta's Quest, and a Sonic Adventure save file would unlock a minigame called Chao Adventure. Both minigames had objectives like collecting gold or earning experience, and in some cases, completing these objectives could lead to said items or experience carrying over to the main games on the Dreamcast. The most popular of these games was Chao Adventure. The game involved training little critters known as Chao to become stronger. You could have them go on adventure walks and find all sorts of things, ranging from fruits, bullies, and even major Sonic characters. Basically, if you took Pokemon and made it look like Tamagotchi, it would be Chao Adventure. As for the console itself, the Dreamcast was designed to reduce costs, meaning that it was manufactured using parts that weren't that expensive to get. As such, it only cost $199 when it launched, half the price of the Sega Saturn that came before it. Unfortunately, it just couldn't compete with its contemporaries. The console really only sold about 9 million units, while its competition sold well above that, with the PlayStation 2 selling 155 million units. Now, it was the first console to come out in that generation, with the console launching in November of 1998 in Japan. And while it didn't do that well in Japan, it did have a more successful launch in the US a year later. However, the PlayStation 2 was literally right around the corner at that point. And with the PS2's ability to play DVDs and its massive library of third-party supports, the Dreamcast was having a hard time staying relevant. The only two things the Dreamcast had going for it against the PS2 were the lower price point and the first-party games. But even after multiple price drops, the PS2 was outselling the Dreamcast at every turn. The console was discontinued in March of 2001, before the GameCube and Xbox were even announced. And from that point on, Sega dropped out of the console business and focused completely on making games instead. Games like Skies of Arcadia! No, shut up! The video's over! Anyway, thank you for listening to some fun facts. If you guys liked this video, please feel free to let us know. We hope to see you soon!